when it comes to trading, when it comes to cryptocurrency, I had no clue what this thing was. All I remember was plugging into crypto Picasso and Bitcoin was three and a half grand. And you were saying, yeah, it's going to hit 400K. And I'm just there like, what? <laughs> I'm just there like, wait, what? So guys, I want to really give you guys a lot of information that's helped me on my journey today. So a couple things, a couple house rules. Number one, take notes. If you're on this call and you're not taking notes, family, there is literally no point you being here. You, you, you may as well just get off the call. Like, <laughs> straight up. You got your notes? I bet. <laughs> cool. Number two, each one teach one. With this information that I'm going to teach you, guys, I want you to teach this to someone else, whether that's in your team, whether that's your friends, whether that's your family, whoever it may be, go and share that with someone else. So let's get right into this source, man. So a couple of things I want to, I really want you guys to understand when it comes to cryptocurrency. Now let's, let's really get into this. If you guys can see the screen, let me get a one more one in the chat. If you guys can see the screen, let's make sure everything's working. Okay. Perfect. 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 So let's really get into this because a lot of people really don't understand what Bitcoin actually is because, look, when we come into the cryptocurrency space, right, you can go on websites like CoinMarketCap, right, and you can see that there is thousands of different cryptos, right? We've got almost 10,000 different cryptocurrencies within this space. Now, a lot of people at the moment are just literally just throwing money at Coinbase. They're just throwing money at Binance. They're just throwing money at, at random projects and just hoping that it's going to go up. Guys, you, you can't cash in hope. You cannot cash in a hope. You can only cash in money, right? So we need to make sure that we're educated with the investments we're making. Just because Bob from Instagram said, hey, buy XRP, just because Jack from down the road said, hey, buy Cardano, doesn't mean you should invest in it. You need to do your due diligence. You need to make sure you're very aware of what you guys are investing in. So let's really strip this back to basics. If you guys have never, ever, ever, ever heard or read or learned about crypto, Put a one, one, one in the chat. If you guys have a medium amount of experience, let's say you, you've invested, you understand what blockchain is, put a two to two in the chat. And if you guys are, you know, you feel like you're an expert, you know, you feel like you should be training and running the call, put a four, four, four in the chat. <laughs> uh, bet. Cool, 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 cool. Just so I can really see what everyone's at. Okay, perfect. So, okay, we've got a lot of people who have never really traded crypto before. So let me pull up this chart for you. Now, before we can even get into the technicals, we need to understand why Bitcoin is going so parabolic. Is you see, this is the first time in history, the first time in history that we have literally having access to a piece of technology, a piece of technology that has a US dollar price tag attached. This is the first time in history we can literally buy a bit of technology that has a US dollar attached. So when you're looking at the chart of it, what you're actually seeing, and again, we're going to pull up the actual Bitcoin chart in a second, but I want you to pay attention to this. You see what this is, this is the, essentially all the different technologies that have come out from 1900 to around 2010 when this graph was actually created. So what this is showing you is that over time, right, from the axis at the bottom, more and more technologies are becoming adopted. We can see our adoption rates are rising. So think about it, right, when the iPhone first come out, when the iPhone first came out, not a lot of people had it because they were still using their Blackberries, right? They were still using the LG cookies. They were still using, you know, the, the old school phones. So what happened over time, people slowly started to adopt the iPhones. Now, literally every single person has an iPhone. Yeah, we're not going to speak about Android, <laughs> but you get the point. So when it comes to cryptocurrency, because this is an actual technology that is allowing you to obviously send payments without, you know, without a government involved, this is becoming more and more adopted. Guys, less than 4% of the population actually know what cryptocurrency is. Less than 4%. Guys, less than 4% of the world know what crypto is. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm too late to invest. I'm too late to invest. Well, you're, listen, you're early. You're still early. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin has only been around for 10 years. So if we actually look at this chart here, which is the Bitcoin liquid index, this is showing essentially an average this is an average of all of the different brokers, because when you're looking at cryptocurrency, there's going to be different data feeds and they're going to have different prices, right? If we just go, literally, if we just type in BTC USD and we look at one broker, right, on Bitstamp, current price on Bitstamp is going to be completely different, let's say, to that we can see on the right hand side, right? On one broker at 6,060, one broker at 6,400. So what I'm saying is when it comes to this chart and looking at your longer term pitch chart, this is probably one of the best charts to look at. Now, what I want you guys to understand is these cycles we're having. And this network, the reason why Bitcoin is only going up is because it's getting more and more adopted over time. 
It's getting more and more adopted over time. You see, what you're witnessing is the growth of a network. This is something we have never seen before. You know, when you look at the S&P 500, for example, right? If we look at the S&P 500, this is a stock market, right? But this, this, is, this is all the, the economy. This is all the technology. What I want you guys to understand is cryptocurrency is becoming adopted. Cryptocurrency really has the power, to, in my opinion, to completely destroy all the other stocks and everything else in the world. This is disruptive technology because we have never had blockchain before. So when it comes down to it, what do you need to know to make money? You need to know the different cycles. You need to understand the different cycles because I want you to, I want you to understand something. How many traders lose? Most traders lose. It says here, 70, 80, 90% of traders lose money and end up quitting. And that's something that's going to stay consistent no matter what. Cool, you might. I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm not here for you guys to like me. I'm here to make you guys money. Because what you need to understand is most of you people, most of you guys invested right now in a year's time, you're going to lose all your money if you don't get out. Because what this market is designed to do is to cause certain emotions within you that's going to essentially make you keep investing and not want to get out of the market. That's how they're designed. All of these little brokers, all of these little, you know, Coinbase websites, all of these little Exodus wallets, all of these different things are literally psychologically designed for you to lose money. Because where do you think these exchanges are making their money from? Where do you think these brokers are making their money from? They make their money off you losing your money. So I want to put this, this sheet in front of you. This is the Wall Street cheat sheet. Now, if you've never come across this, this is going to be an absolute game changer because this is an emotional market. You see, the one thing consistent in every single market is human emotions. The one thing consistent in every single market, whatever it may be, is human emotions. So what do we mean by human emotions? You see, let's, let's actually look at some of the prior market cycles of Bitcoin because the keys to Bitcoin's future are based off in Bitcoin's past. So if we look at, let's say back in, you know, back in 2015, Right. When, when, when Bitcoin, before it went on that massive rally, right? when it went on that massive rally back in 2011, we see we was at a point when Bitcoin was literally, well, at one point, like what, 1p, 2p. When Bitcoin started having its initial gains at the beginning, the emotion in the market was disbelief. People were saying, nah, what is this Bitcoin thing? Nah, it ain't going up. It ain't got no use case. And it's not real. It's not worth it. It's a scam. It, it, you know, it's not real. Disbelief. So then what happens? Bitcoin starts to rally. Maybe goes from a penny towards 50p, towards a pound, right? At this point, again, nothing, nothing crazy, no, no insane gains, but the, the emotion is now starting to switch into hope. People are feeling, wait a minute, wait, this, this might actually have some potential. This is going up, you know, this has gone from literally a penny, you know, this has gone up seven and a half thousand percent in less than a year, in 189 days. 8,000% in less than a year. Guys, the S&P 500 will do around 11% a year. That's the top 500 stocks in America. The top 500 stocks in America on average do around 11% a year. A year. We're talking about something that's doing 8,000% in 189 days. This is not something normal. This is not something that, you know what I'm saying? This is disruptive technology. So what's going to start to happen now is as the price rises, different emotions come up. And we're going to talk about exactly where we are in the market because this bull market is almost over. Now, <laughs> again, we're going to speak about that in a minute, but I want you to understand how it's happened in the past. You see, as price starts to rally, as we start maybe going towards those $3 price tags, as we start getting higher and more, you know, more money starts flowing in the market, the emotion now starts to switch. It goes from disbelief where everyone's like, no, nah, I'm not putting no money in this because it's a scam to, wait a minute, it actually has some potential, to optimism, like, wait a minute, this is actually real. Like, yo, this, this thing's actually going to go up now. Like, man, it's crazy. Because imagine if you invested at a penny and you brought, you know, you invested at a penny and now your, bit, your investment's sitting at $15. Yo, like, you're up, you know, you're up, you know, over 11,000%. Like, that is insane return on investment. What happens now? Now you're, now you're feeling optimistic and now you're going to start to believe. Now you're going to start to believe in what you just invested in. So now your emotion's gone from disbelief to, no, this is a scam, to belief because you just experienced it. At this point, you're like, wait a minute, it's time to get fully invested. Maybe at the start, you only invested a little bit of capital. At this point, you're like, wait a minute. Oh my God, this is real. I'm going to put all my money. In. I'm going to remortgage my house. I'm going to go and put everything in this. <laughs> Don't remortgage your house. <laughs> Don't even get a mortgage. But anyway, what happens now? As price starts to rally, the emotions now start to switch. We start to switch out of that belief phase, sorry, out of that optimism to belief to now starting to go into thrill, where you're like, wait a minute. Oh my God, I've got to tell everyone to buy. And this is where we're starting to enter now. But again, we'll speak about current you know, market conditions in a minute. 
But again, when we go from this belief to thrill, this is when everyone starts talking about Bitcoin. This is when your barber, you're getting a haircut and your barber's saying, yeah, you heard about that Bitcoin thing? <laughs> this is when you're, yo, ladies, this is when you're getting your nails done and, and you can hear the women speaking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. This is when everyone starts speaking about it. So now everyone's buying in, everyone's making money. It's all good. It's all roses, it's all peaches and creams. Boom, hits a thousand dollars a coin. It's worth more than gold at this point. At, you know, at the time, obviously back in, you know, back in 2013, it was worth more than gold at that point. At this point, people are now feeling euphoric. Whoa, I'm a genius. I'm going to be rich. This is literally the best thing because again, right? If you invested a thousand dollars, look at the gains on that family. That is, I don't even know how many numbers that are in the percentage. We're talking life-changing gains here. Life-changing. This is the most profitable investment of all time. There is nothing else that would give you these returns on investment. Nothing else. And at this point, this is the most dangerous point in the cycle because at this point, everyone's feeling euphoric, everyone's making money. But remember, the markets are not designed for most people to win. The markets are literally designed to shake as many people out and to make sure people lose money. That's how the markets fundamentally work. They are literally designed for people to lose money. That is how the brokers and, and institutions make their money from your loss. When you're losing, like trading's a two sum game, investing's a two sum game. The only way people make money is from the loss of other people. So where's that loss going to occur? Where is that loss going to occur? And unfortunately, the masses are going to experience that loss because of herd psychology. Humans, we, we've got this tribal nature inside of us where people are conditioned to look at the masses and do what most people are doing, right? Because they want to be part of the tribe. But I've learned over my experience in the crypto game and from what my mentors have taught me that you want to observe the masses and you want to do the complete opposite. You want to observe the masses and do the complete opposite. I remember standing on stage when Bitcoin was $3,500. And I remember asking everyone, put your hand up if you own Gucci. Bare people put their hand up. Loads, no, literally about 75% of the room put their hand up. I said, boom, put your hand up if you own crypto. About 5% of the room put their hand up. See, at that point, I knew, but I need to go all in on this thing, man. I got to tell more people, my friends, my loved ones to invest. But again, the emotions. When Bitcoin was down at three grand, what was everyone feeling? Oh, disbelief. It's dead, it's dead, it's dead. Because what happened? We had that massive bet, like we had that bear market. Now, what I want you guys to understand is this is all based on time. This is not random. The cryptocurrency markets are literally not random, man. This is the most easiest thing to make money in if you know what you're doing. So what do I mean? We're based on four-year cycles. So these four-year cycles, literally, is called, okay. So what, what causes the four-year cycles? It's something called the harbinger. Give you guys some time to digest this because I know I speak really quick. <laughs> the Harvard, right? Where's the, where's the website? I've literally got a new computer, so I've lost all my fucking links. Um, is this the right website? Oh, okay, basically, right? What I want you to understand is that there's only a certain amount of Bitcoins in the world, right? There can only ever be 21 million of these coins. Only 21 million. Now, because there's only 21 million of these coins in the world, how are they going to come into fruition? Because not all 21 million Bitcoins just just came into fruition. No, they have to, they have to come into fruition through a process called mining. So what does mining mean? How does mining work? Essentially mining is like solving a really complex code, but it's done by computers. So what, how Bitcoins come into creation, they need a miner. So a miner, look, mining rigs, China. Let me show you something. So what happens in, in places like China and so many countries around the world, they have these big farms of mining rigs like this. Because what happens is these computers, they're solving basically complex codes. And when they solve these complex codes, they get rewarded. What do they get rewarded? They get rewarded in Bitcoin or whatever coin they're, you know, they're mining, right? So what happens is when they mine these coins, at, when, they, when Bitcoin first released, there was a certain amount of Bitcoins coming into circulation. But what happens every four years, the supply is cut in half. Every four years, the supply is cut in half. The amount of Bitcoins that become available to the network gets cut down. So think about this. If you're, if you're a miner now and you've got massive, you know, massive, massive farms like this where you're going to be spending hundreds of thousands on electricity every single month, you've got all these mining rigs and now you're getting less Bitcoin for all your effort. What do you think is going to happen to the price? They're going to, because where do you think the Bitcoin comes from? The exchanges don't come. Yo, the, look, miners sell to the exchanges. Miners sell to the exchanges. So 
what's happening right now in the crypto space is these exchanges are literally running out of Bitcoin. They are literally running out of crypto. So it's all based on supply and demand. When demand exceeds supply, price rises. More, there's only 21 million Bitcoins in the world, and there's like 8 billion people on this planet. What's going to happen when the whole world wakes up and says, wait a minute, I need one Bitcoin? The price is literally just going to rise. Now, again, I'm not a financial advisor. So again, right? please don't make any... If you're making your own investments, again, you know, do your own research, do your own diligence. I'm not being held liable for anyone's investments. However, what I want you to understand is these cycles. Now, if we actually look on the chart, and I want to show you a very, very nice... Where is this? Where is this saucy, 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 saucy? Oh, where's my favorite one? Here we go. Where is it? Hash ribbons. Perfect. So what I want to show you here is what happens in the market. So each one of these red lines is what happens called the hardening. Now, the hardening is that event where the supply gets cut in half. Now, again, you guys can do more research on, on go live. You know, you guys can plug into Crypto Picasso. You guys can plug into Curtis Cobain. They go live every single week. And that's exactly where I learn everything from. There is a plethora of different education you guys can plug into. Um, but again, we'll get into that in a second. So what happens is literally every four years, the supply gets cut in half. Now, notice what happens. Notice what happens. We have a massive bull market, right? We have a bull market. Price takes a little dip and we get a small reaccumulation phase. Then price gets halved. The supply gets cut in half. The halving occurs. Once supply is cut in half, just because there's less Bitcoins coming to circulation doesn't mean less people want it. If anything, more people want it. So the price goes absolutely parabolic, like crazy. What happens now? We enter euphoria. Everyone's making money. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's loving it. Everyone's gassed. Everyone's like, yeah, I'm running up bags, man. I'm going to be a millionaire. Sheesh. Everyone's gassed. Boom, what happens next? We enter that bear market. So if now anyone who invests up here they're going to lose 80 to 90% of their gains. Look at that drop. We're seeing that almost 90% drop because this is what I mean. These markets are literally designed to shake people out. A lot of people are investing too late. They're FOMOing in, not getting in before these cycles occur. They're just, again, paying attention to the media, looking at what the news is doing and just jumping in blindly. They're not understanding where they are in the bigger picture. And then imagine that. Imagine, imagine investing 100 grand up here. And then only having 10 grand left or 15 grand left. You'd be vexed. Imagine how depressed. Again, back to the Wall Street cheat sheet. You'd be depressed. You're going to be angry. You're going to be, you're going to be vexed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to be in this latter side of the, of the cycle because this, this is literally what happens. This is the emotions investors go through. Because if you just, right, imagine this, just seeing every single person invest, right? You've seen loads of people making money. You see all your friends making money. You're starting to make money now. You're gassed. Starts dipping. Oh, we're going to buy the dip. Buy the dip. I'm going to buy the dip. I'm going to buy the dip. Oh, no, why is it going lower, man? Why is the dip taking so long? Man, this, this is going to go up, man. This is going to go up. It's going to go up. Boom, starts dropping lower. Now you're feeling anxious. And you're like, wait a minute. Why am I, why am I in a loss? This, you know, this is taking a little bit longer. Boom, starts dropping even lower. Let's say you invested 100K and now you're only sitting with 60K. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, I'm in denial. Nah, Bitcoin's the best. This has to go up. It has to go up. It has to go up. Boom, maybe your portfolio is now sitting at 40K. Now, you think, now you're panicking, you're thinking, shit, everyone's selling, I need to get out. Everyone's selling, I need to get out. 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 Boom, go into capitulation, anger, and then depression. This is the thing, family. These markets are literally designed. Like, and this is the thing. Everyone talks about, oh, Bitcoin's going to the moon. That's not an investment strategy. You, like, look, imagine going to Berkshire Halfway, Warren Buffett's investment platform, and literally his company, and saying, hey, I want to invest in Bitcoin. Why? Oh, it's going to the moon, bro. Come on, like, come on, family. You need to have proper targets. You need to know exactly what you're doing. This is why having education is so important. The best investment you can make is not in any cryptocurrency, is not in any stock, is nothing. It's not Forex. It's not, it's not drop shipping. The best investment you can make is in you and your education. If you're not investing in your future, if you're not investing in your mind and your education, cool, you might make a quick bag, but what's the point in making a bag if you don't know how you made the bag? This is what I was saying to a mill. See, when a mill hit me up, it, I, I could I could have I could look, I could have gave I could give you guys so many coins and you could all make you know five thousand, ten thousand percent ROIs. Of course, we've done it, it's not hard. But cool, you can do it once, but it's not about doing something once, it's about doing it, being able to do it again and being able to be consistent with it. I'm not here to flip a bag. If you're here to flip a bag, get off the call. You're not you're not you're not gonna be able to sustain that. It's about growth over time. So what I'm saying is 
when it comes to these markets, you need to have a solid game plan. So what, what I want you guys to understand is this cycle is literally rinse and repeat every four years. Boom, this boom and bust phase. Again, we go through that euphoric phase and then we crash heavy. We go through another two-year bear market. Wipe every single one out. Shake every single one out. At this point, again, a lot of people are, are locked in their mind. There are too many people are trapped in the head and they're going to be becoming victim to their emotion and reacting to them instead of responding to them. So what will happen is they're going to start cashing out. They're going to start taking losses. Because imagine, imagine if you invested up here and it goes down 80, 90%, you're going to be angry. And then what happens? We lead up to the halving again. We go through that accumulation phase. Smart money starts accumulating price again. Price halvens, have a little jump up before the halvening. Boom, halvens, supply shock, price goes absolutely exponential. And again, if you want to look at the emotions in the market, like you can literally judge the market sentiment just looking on Instagram or looking on Twitter. Like, you, like literally, you can judge what's happening in the crypto space just by looking on Instagram. And I'm noticing now everyone's a crypto genius. So we are literally now entering, I'll, I'll tell you where we're entering. Right now, we are literally entering belief through and euphoria. Now, this is the most profitable phase, especially for those who got in at the end, because we're going to really go parabolic now. Like we are literally going to go, par and guys, I see questions. Please hold your questions to the end. I will have time for everyone to have a good um, session for Q&A. I just want to get all this information to you guys, and then we can get into the questions. So, um, God, I forgot where I was now. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, where was we? Back to this. Yeah, we are now in belief. Literally just looking on Instagram, right? Looking at every single person, everyone's starting to become greedy. Everyone is now a crypto expert. Literally, go on, family, open your phone right now. Go on Instagram and literally look up five Instagram stories. If you don't find someone talking about cryptocurrency in five stories, I don't even know who you're following these days. Like everyone's becoming an expert. So we are now entering this belief phase. Now that's not a bad thing because look, I I'm happy. I want everyone to get a bag. Man. I want everyone to win from this. But we need to be careful. I want you to write this quote down. I'll I want you guys to write this one down. When others are greedy, be fearful. And when others are fearful, be greedy. When I stood in that, when I stood on that stage and no one really knew what Bitcoin was, everyone was looking at me like I was a, like I was a lunatic. Everyone was being fearful about Bitcoin. Oh, I don't know if I should invest in it. Man. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I was buying that shit up. <laughs> yeah, I was going broke investing, bro. I was buying that thing heavy. So I'll, I'll put it in the chat. So when others are greedy, be fearful. Oh, someone did it. Thank you very much, Shante. Appreciate you. Yeah, and this is the thing, man. Like, and even when there's blood on the streets, even if it's your blood, you need to be low. No, that's when you need to clear up. You need to be buying. Now, I want to show you guys something. All right, back in back in March, right? Back in March, when Bitcoin had that fat crash, that was literally a little gift. That was literally a little gift. And the funny thing was, right? Let me let me show you this. Right? I want to show you something. Let me show you. Let me show you a screenshot. Because I, I like, I, I want to show you guys like proof because we're not just, you know, just like capping about this shit. Because look, let me show you something that is funny, man. I remember this is when I went, used to go uni before I dropped out. I remember I was on my way to uni and I see Bitcoin crash heavy, fam. I see it crash heavy at this point when it was crashing. Everyone was going crazy. Everyone's like, oh my God, do I sell? Do I sell? Do I sell? Do I sell? I mean, I, I was, I was, I was already out actually. I can't lie. I was already out up here and I got back in down here. But just to show you something. Like these markets are predictable. Look at the timestamp. I tweeted this back in 2020. Probably going to be a wick on the weekly slash monthly BTC. Like, and you guys know where we are right now. Like you guys literally know where we are right now. We are plus, you know, 60, $61,000. Now this is the point where we are literally starting to go absolutely parabolic. Now, will I give you guys some targets? I'll give, uh, mm, yeah, I'll give you guys some targets. So check this out. Where, where are we going to be going? Where, where, where is Bitcoin heading? So, Let's have a look. If we study the past and we start looking at the measured moves from the past, we can actually see what's going to happen in the future. So if we look at our first cycle, right, we can see a 36,000% gain. We take a, we have a, again, 80, 90% sell off, 80, 90% sell off. What happens after that? Boom, and our bull market again. And we have a 73,000% ROI. What happens? Price dips down again, another 80, 90%. And then again, we rally again. In this case, we rally over 13,000% for this bull market. So what I'm going to base my targets off, what I'm basing my targets off again, I'm not a financial advisor. Past profits do not guarantee future results. All trading, all investing does involve risk. Please do not invest more than you can afford to lose. 
And if we actually just look at the same cycle, 13,800%, where does that take us? Where does that take us? Where does that take us? That takes us, wait, let's get it. That takes us to around $380,000 mark. Right? If we make this a little bit more precise, right? Make a little bit more precise. That takes us to around $375,000. And look how close we are. Look how close we are. Like a lot of people think, oh, it's, it's super, like, look how close we are, man. Like this bull market is, uh, is over halfway complete. Like, uh, like uh, you see what I'm saying, family? Like this thing, we're almost there. We are almost there. And what's going to happen after it hits these levels, we're going to crash back again. We're going we're gonna to dip back down. We're going to dip back down 80, 90%. We're going to come back to these 50K, 40, 50K, 60K levels before we again go parabolic towards a million, towards 600, 700,000. Now, again, like you guys can, you guys, look, you guys can take that. You can do what you want with that information. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is the game we are playing. I brought Bitcoin back up 4K, packed down here, sold it up here, and then got back in down here. Like family, this market is an absolute, absolute monster with these gains you can be making. Now, when it comes down to it and actually really, you know, solidifying your gains, there's a few things you need to understand. And the most important thing you guys need to understand is how you actually can make money from this. Because a lot of people only like a lot of people don't are not aware of the different ways you can make money. You know, the first way you can make money from this is holding. Right? What do we mean by holding? Holding is literally just buying and just waiting. Just buying and just waiting. Just buying and just waiting. Now you're just holding on to your coin. You gotta have diamond hands for this. What do, what do we mean by diamond hands? Diamond hands are literally holding on no matter what happens in the market. Because again, you need to know what game you're playing. A lot of people, again, you can't just come in with that mentality of, oh, it's going to the moon because what's the moon? You can't quantify the moon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, So when it comes down to it and holding it and hodling, essentially, again, wh whatever the dips are, you just got a man through the dips. There are going to be retracements. There are going to be 40% pullbacks, 30% pullbacks that... You know, when you're looking at on the day-to-day -day price action, right? Not on a logarithmic time frame, you're not zooming out. You might be thinking, like, if you're looking on the, on the on the smaller time frames, you might be thinking, oh, it's gonna flip, it's gonna go down. But remember, that's what they're designed to do, right? That is literally what they're designed to do. They're literally designed to shake people out, literally designed to drop again. Look at that 30% drop, shakes everyone out of the market. It's literally what's gonna happen. So you've got holding, right? That's one way you can make money from this. You can hold, right? You can you can buy and you can hold. That's more long term. When you're holding, it's a bit more passive. You don't have to be as active on the chart. You haven't got to be, you know, you, 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 it's just literally just passive. The second one, you've got margin trading. Now, I love margin trading. Margin trading is one of my favorite ways, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, margin is one, of, yeah, it's one of my favorite ways of making money. So what do we mean by margin trading? When you're margin trading, what you're doing is you're trading on platforms like MetaTrader 4. You're using leverage. So you're, you're getting a broker. Um, and you're catching the pips, you're catching pips, you're not catching, obviously, the move, you're catching the pips, you're, you're basically spread betting. Now, margin trading is a very, very, very good way, a very lucrative way. In my opinion, there's more money to be made in that than it is doing, um, doing anything else. But anyway, number three, you've got exchange trading. Exchange trading is very good because this is how you can actually start to multiply your cryptocurrency holdings and actually um, accumulate more Bitcoin, accumulate more of these cryptos. Number four, You've got mining. Actually, wait. You've got staking. I like. You've got staking. Staking is amazing. Um, staking is one of my favorite things because staking allows you to basically accumulate more crypto just by holding crypto. For example, one of my favorite coins. Oh, okay, I'm gonna give you all the source. Like what? Well, <laughs> well, as much as I can. One of these coins, Tezos. Right. It's one of my favorite projects. Now, why is Tezos one of my favorite projects? Let me show you. Uh, where are we? So Tezos allows you to do something called staking. Now, what does Tezos allow you to do? What do we mean by staking? So staking, forget the price, right? Forget what the chart's doing. For however many Tezos you have, you're going to earn interest on your Tezos. You're going to earn, forget the price, forget the price, the price doesn't matter. Forget the price. Let's say you had a thousand Tezos, right? You're going to accumulate more Tezos just by holding the Tezos. So what do you think is going to happen to the price? If you, if you get more of the coin, imagine this. Imagine having a grand in a bank account, 
You don't get more like money for that, do you? You get interest, yeah, you get some percent, but you don't get more money. So imagine your money is get, making you more money whilst that money making you more money is going up in, in percentage return on investment. Do you get that? So staking allows you to have coins that are, of course, going to have crazy ROIs and crazy gains, but at the same time, you're going to be accumulating more of those coins. So again, staking is a beautiful way to make money. Um, next way you've got of making money is you've got mining. Mining, mining is not something I'd recommend for anyone or, or most people, to be honest, because you need a lot of capital, a lot of electricity. It is, it is quite long to mine, to be fair. Um, and, it's, and mining is one of those things where we're not even going to speak about it. <laughs> we're not even going to speak about it. But there are some different ways you can make money in the cryptocurrency space. Um, again, family, like I said, all of the questions we'll get to at the end. Um, so yeah, there are some different ways you can make money from it. And what I want you guys to understand is some very, 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 very important charts. Actually, before we get into the charts, this is more important than that. Where are you storing your coins? Where are you storing your coins? That is important. Where are you storing your coins? A lot of people got their coins stored in Coinbase, got their coins stored in Binance. Yo, put up, put up one and one in the chat if you got your coins in if you got your coins in Coinbase, or 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 one one in the chat if you got them in Binance, or if you got her in Crypto.com. Oh, oh, <laughs> all right, bet family. This is what I'm saying, man. This is why you need the proper education. These websites. Now, I'm not talking down about them because they're still good to go from fiat currency to crypto. However, you don't want to be storing them in there because they don't give you what we call the private keys. So if you remember one thing from this training, remember this. Private keys versus public keys. What's this? What's a private key? What's a public key? So when it comes to crypto, when it comes to your actual coins, they're assets. Coins, cryptocurrency is an asset class. An asset is a thing. It's, it's something, right? It's, it's tangible. Now, even though the digital is tangible. Now, let's say I've got this Bitcoin here. And when it comes to having a private key and a public key, what's the difference? A public key is saying, okay, let's say we've got Jamie on the call, right? This, a, a public key would be saying, here you go, Jamie. You can look after my crypto and you can give me my crypto when you say it's ready. What do you mean? No, nah, that's not my crypto. If he's looking after my crypto and if he's holding my crypto, that ain't my crypto. He can tell me it's mine, but if I don't physically have the key to it, it's not mine. It's like your house. Your house is your house because you have the key to your front door. Imagine if I had your house key and I said you can only enter your house when I deem you can enter your house. See what I'm saying? You don't want to have public keys. You need to have the private keys. And these exchanges, every single exchange, Coinbase, Binance, Crypto.com, um, Uniswap, all of them, BitMEX, BitMAX, Kraken, all of them, they don't offer private keys. They only offer you public keys. So if you don't have the private keys, you do not own the coins. I don't care what your broker says, what your exchange says, you do not own the coins. What, what typically happens is a lot of these brokers do a lot of manipulating. They do a lot of manipulating the price of Bitcoin. You see, what they do is when, when certain news events happen, such as what they will do is they'll turn off their exchanges. And when they turn off their exchanges, how are you going to get access to your coin? If someone's turned off, <laughs> if someone's turned off an exchange and your coins are in the exchange, how are you going to get access to them? Again, I'll give you another example. Your house key. If I've got your house key and I stop answering your call, you ain't getting in your house again. You see what I'm saying? So you need to be in control of your of your keys. If you're not in control of your keys, you're not in control of your coins. So how are you going to get access to the private keys? How you get access to your private keys is very, very simple. What you do is you go and get a wallet. So when it comes to getting a wallet, what, what do you mean by wallet? Now, there, there's a... Um, yeah, I'll call. I'll, I'll got you, Jim. Don't worry. So when it comes to private keys, it all depends on, per, on your budget. Um, and how much you actually have invested. You see, myself, I've got slightly different setups than um, what most people do. Because um, again, right, when if you get start getting to those bigger portfolio balances, you can start to get some slightly better private ways of getting your private keys. But a few simple ways, if you're going to invest less than $1,000, you may as well get the Exodus wallet. The Exodus wallet is a completely free wallet. Exodus.io. Exodus is a completely free wallet you can download. You literally just come in there. 
exodus.io. Literally just come to the website, download it, um, and you get access to all of them. What will happen um, when, you, when you have your coins on here, it's going to ask you to back it up. When it comes to backing your coins up, this is very, very important. So what do we mean by backing your coins up? So when you when you send your coins from Coinbase or you know wherever it is to, to this wallet, you need to make sure you back it up. And what, what it's going to do is it's going to give you this code. Now, I'm going to obviously make sure you guys can't see the code, but I, I'm going to show you like an, an example. So it, it, it will ask you to write it down on a piece of paper. Now, this piece of paper with the code you get, you need to keep it secure. You can't store this online. Don't store this on your on your iPhone notes. Don't take a photo of it because you know that can get hacked. And people are looking for private keys on iCloud. You know, photos, notes, etc. It's not hard to hack that. But anyway, what you want to do is have it physically written down and get a safe and store it in a physical safe. Literally, go buy a safe. Literally, buy a safe, bolt a safe to the wall, and store this in there. If you store this in there, no one can get hold of your coins unless they obviously get hold of this. Now, the beautiful thing about this is <clears throat> if anything happens to your Exodus wallet, so let's say, for example, you've got your Exodus wallet. Um, um, if anyone, sorry, um, I'm going to close the chat for a little bit. Um, but if anyone, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Where are we at now? Um, at least we've got where it was. This, so if anything happens to your wallet, if anything happens to your laptop, if anything happens to your computer, doesn't matter because your coins are technically stored on this phrase. They're not technically stored on that laptop. They're actually stored in this code. So that code, make sure you keep it secure. And the beautiful, the beautiful thing of this is you can literally, you can literally go across borders with unlimited capital. Like, I'm gonna let you do your own ideas with that. But <laughs> like, there is no way of, of them checking it. This is DeFi, this is decentralized finance family. The banks have no power here. <laughs> they have no power here. And that's why I love this. So. Again, you can literally like go to another country with this code, boom, tap it in your laptop, boom, boom, you get access to all your funds, wherever you are in the world. Um, so that's that. Again, I, I recommend this if you're investing less than a grand, um, because again, like, if you're investing less than a grand, obviously you can't really afford to go and buy a wallet. So boom, get this. If you're going to invest more than a thousand, um, you have to go and buy a physical wallet. Now, we don't, we don't have to. It's, it's still pretty secure, but it's better. So when it comes to buying a physical wallet, this is like a little USB pen you can get. Oh, by the way, this browser I'm using is fucking amazing. This browser literally pays you in crypto. So th this browser, right, literally last month, I made $80 just by using the internet. $80 just from using the internet in crypto. So Brave Browser, I know this is random, but Brave Browser, if you go to it, you can see what I'm using. It will block all the adverts and it pays you in crypto. So it it's lit. It's literally, it's lit. So get this wallet. Now, what you can actually do as well is to store it. I personally store my coins on this wallet here, the Trezor wallet. Now, Trezor is very, very secure. Um, you can literally just get on Amazon. Um, it's banging. So when you've got this coin, I'm getting black, you can get in white, it literally doesn't matter. It's, it's the same sort of setup in, the, in terms of, you know, you, you're getting your private keys, you're writing them down. But this is a little bit more secure because with this, you can actually access this completely offline. So even if like, let's say there's a, Let's say, you know, the internet just crashes for whatever reason. It's fine. You can still use this Trezor to go on a computer or whatever and still do transactions um, with this. This is very powerful. I really enjoy this one. Um, yeah, this is it. Yeah, I really enjoy this one. So um, they're the main wallets we're going to go through today. Um, make sure you get a wallet. Do not store your coins in any exchange. You are, you got to be crazy to have your coins in an exchange. Um, so yeah, that's that. Well, we're on time. How are you guys feeling so far, man? You guys getting value from today? You guys getting you guys getting value? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that was very good. What Kish just put in the chat um, from Amazon? Yeah, bro, it's fine if it's fine if you get it off Amazon. It's not a problem. Um, I brought mine off Amazon, but what the key is? I want to show you something. Where's the sticker? The sticker is going to come with, right? Boom. So when you buy the wallet, it's going to have a seal like this. It will have a little seal like this. I can't really show you guys a physical example. Um, so, oh, fuck's sake. I'm dead. Um, but there, there will be a proper seal on it, right? And you want to make sure that obviously the whole thing's intact. If you get this wallet and the seal is damaged, if it's open, for whatever reason, do not plug that in your computer. Send it back straight away. Send it back straight away and get another one. Um, yeah, it, it should look like that, right? 
there's a hologram on it, it should look like that and it should yeah obviously make sure it's not it's not tampered with by any um, any means it's the whole box should be secure um big value sheesh man let's go let's go family um my insta my insta is at ik davis um cool so there's a quite a few things i, I also want to share with you guys as well um let's i'm just trying to think what we're going to go through first so let's get in some questions let's get in some questions if you guys got questions yo feel free to just blast the chat with your questions um and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into some questions um because we can go for a lot more but i just do want to be conscious of time because like if we start getting into altcoins yo we're gonna be here all day <laughs> But one thing I was talking to you guys about whilst the questions are coming through is this chart here. This chart is very, 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 very important. How important? Very important. So what is this chart? This is the Bitcoin dominance chart. Now, what's happening right now is Bitcoin's at a point in time where it's okay. So okay, I'm gonna have to draw something out for you guys. So what, what happens in the crypto market, right? We spoke about altcoins, right? We, we spoke about, there's, okay. So, okay, I, 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 okay. So, first, okay, there's different types of coins. So the first coin is obviously you got Bitcoin, right? You got the main coin, which is Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is like, if you guys trade Forex, Bitcoin is like the dollar index, meaning whatever Bitcoin does, <laughs> essentially the other coins should follow. They should correlate with Bitcoin. So if you want to kind of view the market sentiment, you can literally just look at what Bitcoin is doing and you'll get a very good, clear understanding. Now, so that's what obviously Bitcoin is, the main coin. Now, the second type of coin is an altcoin. So an altcoin, an altcoin is an alternative coin, right? Alternative means anything other than Bitcoin. So when people say altcoin, they're referring to another project that's not Bitcoin. <coughs> now, you've also got transactional coins. A trans transactional a transactional coin again. Ignore the spelling. You, you ain't got a spell to make money. It's got to know when to when to buy and sell. Um, transactional coins, right? So a transactional coin. The purpose of a transactional coin is for transactions, right? So this was created to send money. Bitcoin is a transactional coin. Transactional coins are normally based off scarcity, meaning there only be a certain amount to ever be produced. Second type of coin is a functional coin. A functional coin essentially has more than one function. For example, Ethereum, there is nine and a half thousand cryptocurrencies in the world and over 6,000 of them are built on Ethereum's blockchain. Yes, I just said that. Most of the coins in the space are built on Ethereum's blockchain. So what do you think has happened to Ethereum? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? 20, carat, 20 grand this year. <clears throat> oh, you heard that here first. Anyway, functional coins, very, very good projects. And the final coin is a stable coin. Now, when it comes to stable coins, um, I, I'm not going to talk about NFTs, bro. I, I don't really look into them too much. I can't lie. I'm not the most knowledgeable person on NFTs, so I ain't going to speak about that. If you do want to learn more about NFTs specifically, um, you can actually go to my guy Curtis Cobain on, on Go Live under Digital Currencies. Um, and bro, he's the NFT guru. Like he goes over all of that stuff, man. Um, again, myself. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Go plug in some of his sessions, bro. He's got a um, intro to NFTs somewhere. But anyway, um, stable coins are actually my one of my favorite coins as well. Um, and now stable coins are really good because, <laughs> oh, do I drop the source? Fuck yeah. So, okay, so during the bear market, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So when obviously Bitcoin is going to go on a, on, a, on a tear up and it's going to crash, what I'm going to personally do is I'm going to be trying, okay, I'm going to be taking my coins and putting them in stable coins. So a stable coin is essentially a coin that is pegged to the US dollar, meaning the value of these coins will only stay at a dollar. So, Kieran, why would you go and invest in a coin that's only going to stay at a dollar? Because, firstly, I want to utilize the blockchain. I want to utilize the power of decentralized finance. I want to utilize that as essentially a bank account rather than Barclays or HSBC or, <laughs> or Lloyd's, because you can still utilize you know, the privacy, you can still utilize the security of the cryptocurrency technology but you can still have that security in the value. Um, USDT, stay away from USDT. Don't, stay away from that. Um, but yeah, DAI is very good um, and USDC as well. Um, man said this sauce is going on my dinner. <laughs> I, I remember you, man. I remember you. I remember you. Um, but yeah. So your stable coins are very, very good for traders. Um, again, you can do this for exchange trading as well. Um, so yeah, 
let's let's look in the and let's look at the, the questions, huh? Let's look at the questions. I remember there's quite a few questions in the chat box, man. Oh, yo, we can go. We can literally go all day, man. Like, we can we can talk for the next five hours if you want. <laughs> let's see what the questions. I just see loads of numbers in the chat. <laughs> um, is this call recorded? Yes, this call is recorded. And if anyone wants to know more, um, if you guys want to actually, if you want a secret nugget about how I'm gonna make more money with another coin, a lot more money and duplicate Bitcoin, go back and watch this video. Go on my YouTube and go watch this video. Go watch how to multiply Bitcoin, alt season. Go and watch this one. If you watch this, this is absolutely saucy. Go watch this and make sure you leave a like and a comment. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what are the other questions? Um, you inspired me with crypto fam. Hey, come on my G. Come on, man. If you're holding for the long run and you got them coins at that price, how are you going to lose? I'm not because I got into the good price, but I'm saying most people will. Most people will lose because most people, again, they're not accumulating. They don't understand what accumulation is. Most people are literally just blind and blindly, right? If we go back to the Wall Street cheat sheet, what most people do is as price goes up, they just keep buying. They just keep buying. They're getting excited. Like they never experienced percentage gains like that. They've never experienced multiplying money before. So they're just gonna keep buying, 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 buying. And when when you're buying up here, and you think obviously below you're gonna be losing. So most people are buying way too late. When the news speaks about it, it's too late. Um, have your case study done on your investment. That's it. That's it. You need a case study, man. You need to know exactly why you're getting involved with a project, man. Like too many people are just throwing money at projects for no reason. Um, yeah, too many flipping dippers, man. You need to know exactly what you're what you're doing it. And that's what I'm saying. Like everyone says, everyone's saying long term investments, but like I'm being real with you guys. You mo like I couldn't even stomach a ninety percent loss. Like imagine seeing your portfolio, yeah, sitting at a million, going down to hundred grand. Obviously, we understand it. It's going to obviously rebound. And we understand the cycles, but most people at that point are going to sell and. And obviously, yeah, shoot themselves in the foot. Um, can you day trade Bitcoin and cryptos using smart money concepts? I'm so glad you answered that question, bro, because we are milking the market, right? I'm in a, at the moment, I'm in a position, I'm floating about one to 250 risk reward um, back from last month. I'll show you, where is it? Oh, did I just delete all the markups? No, here we go. We're still in this, yeah, you can day trade this and we're still holding this. I don't know, I don't think I'll ever close this position. Um, but yeah, you can, you can day trade that. Um, where are we time-wise in relation to the halving? So we had our halving last year in, I think it was August or June. Um, so we had it literally, I'll show you where it was. BLX, weekly. The last halving was here. This was the last halving. Remember, halving expansion crash halvening expansion crash halvening expansion crash so yeah um zero gas law um when others are greedy be fearful when others are fearful be greedy that's it family that is it but wait buy more someone says do you pay yeah 100 percent. the bitcoin dominance chart is very important um very very important for altcoin trading as well um yeah you, you have to look at that you have to look at that chart if, you, if you're looking at altcoins, man, you have to look at that chart. Like, this thing is probably going to come and clear. Well, obviously, I have to deal with it as we go. Um, where are we now? Probably going to retrace a little bit. Obviously, we'll see what happens in here. We'll see what happens up here. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with this. But I feel like this thing is just going to keep crashing. It may, it may, Bitcoin dominance may peak and come back to this weekly supply zone. It may peak and come back here. If it does, I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. But yeah, so, it, okay, it, what, what's this, what does this mean? So this chart basically means when this chart is up, the higher this chart is, means more money is in Bitcoin compared to the other coins. When this chart is down, this means altcoins, there's more money in altcoins. So if there's more money in altcoins, they're going to outperform Bitcoin. Um, are we actually in alt season right now? We are in alt season. Alt season is almost finished. But yeah, mm, 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 mm. can you stake from your wallet? Um, you can, you can stake from your wallet. It, it, it depends what wallet you have. Exodus does support does support staking as well for Tezos. Um, again, it depends what project it is. But yeah, 
um, which is the best website for mining there isn't. So when it comes to mining, you need to actually go and buy like, like you basically need to go and build like a supercomputer with like, su like you know, like mad graphics cards and it's, it's very expensive. Um, does altcoins follow? No, altcoins don't. No, altcoins don't. Altcoins are simply a vehicle. Like altcoins are all shit, man. Altcoins are trash, bro. Like I'm telling you, man, like they're all trash. Like when it comes to altcoins, like the only the only reason you invest in altcoins is to accumulate more Bitcoin. Like don't get attached to your altcoins. Like Dogecoin is lit. Don't get me wrong, but like I, I, I literally don't care about it. Like I literally don't care about it. All, all, all I'm here to do is to use these other coins as a means to accumulate more Bitcoin and then go and buy property. That's literally what I'm here to do. I don't care about them. I'm not getting attached to them. Like I'm literally here to do that and buy assets and get property. So you guys do the same. Don't get attached to your altcoins. Simply use them as vehicles to accumulate more Bitcoin. Um, I'll give you guys some free game. Fuck it. So if you guys want to know what I'm talking about, right? This is what that, that video was referring to. So for example, right, with this, let's say we look at EFBTC. This is a position I've been in for a long time. I'll show you. Where's the chart, huh? There we go. We've got some dirty accumulation happening on this. So what this chart means is this basically allows you to utilize if, okay so basically what happens right is this this chart is showing you that when this chart goes up ethereum's outperforming bitcoin check it out so if we go back to if we go back to 2015 no, no i want the kraken chart if we go back to 2015 right check this out if we go back to 2015 at one point Ethereum was let's just say 50 cents, right? Just to let's just say Ethereum was 50 cents, just to make it simple. And this was on, you know, we're talking October 2015. Now, October 2015, Ethereum was 50 cents. October 2015, Bitcoin, or the okay, let's just say the lowest point Bitcoin was. Again, let's just do this as like that around the same time. Lowest Bitcoin was $150. So let's do some quick maths. If you had a thousand dollars to invest, right, and you invested a thousand dollars into Bitcoin, a hundred and fifty dollars each, right, divided by one hundred and fifty, you would have six point six bitcoins. Right? Six point six 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 seven bitcoins. Now, if you went to Ethereum. There we go. If you go to Ethereum and it was fifty p. How many uh, Ethereum can you get if the, with a thousand dollars at fifty p? You can get two thousand. So, two thousand Ethereum. So, quick maths: two thousand Ethereum. Two thousand Ethereum, and Ethereum had an all-time high of one. Wait, look at the exact, the exact high. Get the exact all-time high on this broker. One thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars. So. We do 1,614.81 times 2,000, because that's how many Ethereum's you have. That's 3.3. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, right? <laughs> All disclaimers do apply, family. Compared to your Bitcoin, right? You had 6.67 Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up to just shy of 20K. Six. Point, wait, where is it? 6.6, yeah, 6.6666667 times 20,000. You would have made 130 racks of Bitcoin or you would have made 3.3 .3 mil of Ethereum. Hey, I don't know. Hey, I, I, I don't know, man. I'd rather invest in Ethereum. That would Bitcoin, didn't it? Hey, you tell me. <laughs> now, this is where it gets crazy because you could have made more. You could have made more. You could have made more. Do you guys want to know how you, how you can make more? Do you guys want to know how you can make more? <laughs> Do you guys want to make... I, I don't think y'all want to make more, man. Like, the chat is just kind of, like, dead off. Like, y'all sleeping? Yo, do y'all want to make more? Like, what, y'all, or what? <laughs> what do y'all want? Y'all want to make more? Or not? If not, we can, we can end this now. I, like, don't, don't bother me. I bet. I bet. Okay, we waking up now, family. I bet. Sheesh, that's what I like to hear. So, I'm going to give you some source now. Cool. So... What happens, right, is we go through something called alt season. So alt season is a time where Ethereum, well, the altcoins in percentage, they actually outperform Bitcoin, right? Again, a simple logic. The market cap is smaller. So when money comes into it, 
obviously it's going to cause exponential gains in things like Ethereum. So what you could have done, if you go to your ETHBTC chart, here we go, Bitrex. Now, check this out. So you would have had, two, check this out. You would have had 2,000 Ethereum down here. 2,000 Ethereum. 2,000 Ethereum. And Ethereum peaked out, this ratio against Bitcoin, at 0 0.1573. What does that mean? That means for every Ethereum you have, every one Ethereum would be worth 0 0.157 Bitcoin. So if we do quick maps, actually, if you have 2,000 Ethereums and they're each worth 0 0.15 blah, 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 Bitcoin, you would now have 314 Bitcoin, bro. Like, are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? Like, <laughs> 314 Bitcoin. And again, right, at 20K a piece, mm, that's, that's what, look. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying in that. If you want to know more about that, you go back and watch this video. <laughs> go back and watch that. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll put that in the chat. Um, but yeah, man, like, like that, there, there's some sauce on it, man. There's some sauce on it. <laughs> and yeah, that's what's happening now, man. Like, this shit's like the boom. I'm personally targeting this in my target zone. So yeah, that's how you can use um, these to accumulate more Bitcoin. Um, Let's have a look. Yeah, everyone's like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Everyone's like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> oh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, family. Um, if you both... Oh, yeah. So if you buy crypto using like Skrill or Revolution, um, yeah, yeah, you can you can transfer that. So there's yeah, most, most exchanges, most brokers, they will allow you to send it from there. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking there was, I did hear something on Go Live about there was one exchange, but most, most exchanges will allow you to send them over to your wallet and get access to the private keys. Um, yeah, Ethereum is going to fly. What about diversification and patience? I heard um, you shouldn't put all of your money into one coin. No, you shouldn't, man. 100% you shouldn't put all your money in one coin. 100%, bro. 100%. Um, and patience. Of course you need to be patient. Um, Club Cobain, you know the vibes, man. Club Cobain, man. Like, trust me, guys. If you want a crypto source, Club Cobain. And if you guys are new and you guys don't know what Go Live is, and you, you guys are, are new to that, go back to the person who sent you this link and ask him how to get access to over 150 live educators going live every single day. Um, go ask him that. Um, Omni, Omni, yeah, Omni has a lot of potential, man. Omni's got a lot of big partnerships. They're actually looking at partnering up with Pokemon as well. If, if they partner up with Pokemon, they partner up with Pokemon, it's game over. Game over. Game over, man. Why stay away from USDT? So USDT, very good question. USDT, basically, so, okay, so let me show you. So if we go to CoinMarketCap and we go to USDT. So with stable coins, the... Like okay, the organization that kind of created the stablecoin, because it's supposed to be backed by the US dollar, they're supposed to have in like a reserve bank account that much, that much is their market cap. So as this market cap is like what 43, 48 billion, they need to have at least 48 billion in a bank account. Right? They need to have that in a bank account. But turns out these guys are just frauds. <laughs> they, they didn't even have a half of that in the bank account. So these guys literally just creating coins and just basically doing that. So there's a massive lawsuit with these guys. I'm just staying away from them. At like, I, I don't want to be that guy. If imagine having like, imagine having like 80 G's or hundred G's in Tether and then it just disappears. Like, fuck that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck that. Like I'm staying away from Tether, man. Like it's, it's long. Um, again, USDC and DAI are very, very good um, alternatives. Um, Five hours, go ahead, notes ready. Yes, do you have a mentorship group? Yes, we do. Um, if you want access to our mentorship group, again, go back to the person who sent you the link and ask him how to get access to it. Um, if, if you just go it from my Telegram or my YouTube or my Instagram, bro, um, send myself a message saying mentorship, I'll get back to you, we'll hop on a call and we'll go from there. Um, exit strategies, please. Come on now, I can't give you that much sauce. <laughs> or can I? So I, I, again, exit strategies, again, depends on what everyone's doing and what you want. Myself, I'm, uh, I'm using this. Wait, what? Come here, here we go. 
So I want to, I'm going to be using this to, what is this? This is very nice. So this allows you to buy houses with real estate. Oh, sorry, buy real estate with crypto, buy houses with real estate, buy real estate with cryptocurrency. It's lit, look. So let's just say, where do you want to go? Anywhere in the world, it has everywhere, but you can literally pay for things on here with XRP, with Ethereum and Bitcoin. So it's quite lit. Look at that. 11 Bitcoin for that house, 60 Bitcoin for that. What? That's a rip off, fam. <laughs> but yeah, like that's one exit strategy. Um, I watch it multiple times to study it. That's it, family. That's it. Repetition is everything, man. Repetition is everything. Um, can you please repeat what transactional coins and functional coins is? 100%. So a transactional coin is a trans... Okay, so a transactional coin, the reason a transactional coin was created was literally just for transactions. So the purpose of that was to literally just buy and set, like to send money from one person to another. For example, um, from my wallet to your wallet, right? That's what Bitcoin is, to literally send money, a means of transfer. Um, and then you've got a functional coin, essentially just has more than one function. It, its purpose is not just to send money. For example, Ethereum's purpose, it allows other companies and other blockchains to build their blockchain on Ethereum. Um, so again, so like all of these coins, like the only reason coins go up in value is because of their market cap, right? The only reason coins go up in value is because of their market cap. And how it's calculated is the market cap divided by the circulating supply. So market cap, how much money's in the space, and then your circ, pardon me, family. So you, mar we're good. I don't, I don't know what that was, <laughs> but we're good. Uh, market cap, 1.1 1 .1 billion at the moment. So 1.1 1 .1 trillion. And if you divide that by 18 um, million Bitcoins, obviously you're going to get the price. So what I'm kind of saying when it comes to Ethereum, like how are you, like imagine you want to build your own blockchain, right? How are you going to get people to put money in your blockchain? You can't, right? You need, you need some sort of token. You need some way so people can go from fiat to crypto. And Ethereum is one of the most popular functional coins in the world because it allows you to build your project on Ethereum's blockchain and allows people to go from fiat currency to Ethereum, from Ethereum to your said project. So yeah, very, very good. Um, can you, yeah. Um, do you use fibs? And if so, how do you learn it? Um, do I use fib? I do, but I don't, bro. It's hard. Like it's hard to explain. Like I mean, I've I've been trading for a while now, so I kind of automatically use them in my head, if that makes sense. Um, but not. I used to when I first got into trading. Like I used to take trades off like the sixty one point eight, you know, seven eight six eight eight six zones. But now I just use. That's all I use fibs for. G. Like just am I in a premium price or a discounting price? Like that's literally it. Um, like yeah, that's 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 it. Um, but if you want to know where to learn that from, again, go live, bro. It's got everything you need. Um, you a legend. I appreciate you, Shaz. I appreciate you. Um, Luciano says, what do you think of grabbing tokens on Uniswap? Personally, I've never used it. Um, so I can't really comment on that, man. Um, I, like, to be honest, wherever you get the coins from, it's going to be the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not really going to be a price difference from one exchange to another. Obviously, there will, but it's not going to be that drastic, if that makes sense. And if BTC was to drop below the price you brought at, um, if BTC was to drop below the price you brought it at, is your investment basically gone or can you hold for the price to go up again? That is correct, Maria. So with cryptocurrencies, because they're asset classes, um, you, you're actually owning a, a Bitcoin, right? Or Ethereum or whatever it may be. You're actually owning the coin, just like this Bitcoin here, right? Like you're actually owning it. And because this can be owned, it can be stolen and it can be taken. So you need to make sure that you've got your security. But the price is irrelevant, you know, whether this, like, for example, let's say the house you're in, right? The house everyone's in at the moment has got X amount of value on it. That's going to change. But even if the value goes down to zero, you've still got your house. <laughs> you still got your house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've still got your house. It's like when the barrels of oil drop down to zero, right? A barrel of oil is still a barrel of oil. It's just worth nothing at the moment. And then obviously it'll be worth different amounts for different times. So I hope that answered. Which educators teaches how to day trade crypto so when it comes to day trading myself, I use um, a thought process called smart money and I apply smart money to cryptocurrency. Um, so if you want to learn smart money in I am literally just go to bouncebacklaunch.com um, forward slash bootcamp. Now, this method is a little bit harder to learn than kind of traditional retail education. But if you learn this. It's game over, man. Game over. That's what I'm saying. It's game over. It's harder, but it's worth it.
game over. Because um, this is actually, this will teach you how an institution actually moves the market. So you're not just entering based off a, a fallacy, a pattern. No, 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 no. You're entering off order flow of what the actual institutions are doing and where you can get monster trades like this one. Where you're sitting at, you know, you're entering a, a trade on Bitcoin, you're fl up. Let's see how many pips this is. Let's see how many pips this is. I'll show you the precision as well. Like, I'll show you the entry as well and timestamps um, in a sec. But, like, look, like we're talking super precision entries. We're talking tiny, tiny, tiny risks. And we're talking massive, 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 massive gains. So, yes, you can day trade crypto. Uh, myself, I, I day trade Forex um, a little bit more actively than crypto, um, personally, um, just because sometimes the spreads on, on crypto can be even ridiculous, man. But yeah, you can. I've got also a breakdown on that on my YouTube if you want to see it. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn that, um, yeah, bounce back snipers, man. The bounce back snipers are beasts. Anyone on the steady um, as well teaches smart money, which is lit. So steady, bounce back boot camp. Um, you've got, there's so many smart money educators, man. If you just go to the Forex section for a second, I mean, again, even if you're learning Forex or crypto, it doesn't matter. You can apply the same analysis on any chart. It literally doesn't matter. Mauricio, he goes through um, smart money. John Dollar and Starboy, smart money. John Fibonacci, again, he goes through smart money. He's a beast. Lex Waves is a beast. Um, Zach McDonald, my favorite. Um, Mike Navarrete, a beast. Uh, Rock Kumar, a beast. Zachary Hogan, Jordan Morgan, one of my other favorites as well. Um, so, yeah, they, they go through smart money. Uh, is it still a good time to get in? Um, is, it, is, it, is it still good to breathe air? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's still a good time to get in. Again, if it depends on what your targets are. If you're trying to margin trade it, well, it depends, right? You're just trying to go on MT4 and execute this now, I wouldn't really recommend executing that like that, would you? But if you're, if you're, if you're dollar cost averaging, then like, that's probably the easiest thing to do is dollar cost average. Just like every single week, just put an amount in. Just put an amount in and, and never be that person who invests, like always have some sort of cash on the sidelines because when there's like dips in the market, you want to be able to capitalize off them. Um, but I guess if you like, is it still a good time to get in? Depends what you're getting into and what your targets are. What's the dominance chart? Uh, I think we explained that. Yeah, we explained that. Um, when should we consider taking profit and what percent? Again, it all depends on your targets. Um, personally, I will be out. Well, I'm so what how okay, how I'm doing it is I'm obviously using my alts to accumulate more Bitcoin. And then I'm going to be back. So, like most of my capital now is elsewhere from Bitcoin. Um, doing, you know, obviously accumulating. And then when my, my alt seasons and my obviously my altcoins reach their targets, I'm gonna be getting rid of all of them, going back into fully Bitcoin again, um, having multiple bitcoins, and then obviously with my bitcoins, cash them out into stable coins and then buy property. And then repeat, rinse and repeat after the bear market. When does alt season finish? Um, when does alt season finish? Where are we now? August? August? Probably be done by August. Um, so I can use it like DXY. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Broski. If you're referring to Bitcoin dominance, you can for alt, altcoin plays, um, but not for Bitcoin like day trading. Can you explain how we are in alt season now? Yet yeah, we're in a bull run for Bitcoin. So yeah, so yeah, bro. So when it comes to it, so how you got to look at it, bro, is when we're in a bull run, like the crypto space is attention on there. Now, just because we're at like alt season doesn't mean Bitcoin crashes. It means more money flows into the altcoins than it does with Bitcoin. And because they're smaller and have smaller market caps, for example, a billion dollars going into Bitcoin is not going to affect price as much as a billion dollars going into BitTorrent, which is like $2.5 billion market cap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, it's one of them ones. Um, by the way, BitTorrent, it looks good. Um, uh, that was my nod to BitTorrent. <clears throat> BitTorrent, I'll say it again, BitTorrent. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to be careful. I'm not a financial advisor. But anyway, when it comes to that question, bro, so what happens is, the, again, the money just flows out. So what happens in your bull run is, let's just say this is, okay, so let's just say, right, this is your Bitcoin market cycle, right? So obviously, let's say, you know, Bitcoin down, again, this is just hypothetical, right? So let's say this is when Bitcoin was like 
you know, 3K and this is Bitcoin, you know, 380K. What will happen on this path? The altcoins will obviously be dead, doing fuck all. And it'll go, it'll get to a point where the altcoins actually start to outperform Bitcoin. Actually, I need to draw a bell because the altcoins happened before. So let's say, for example, this is the altcoins, right? So you've got, you know, Ethereum doing its thing, going crazy, and then obviously crashing, right? And what happened with Bitcoin is obviously Bitcoin will be catching up and it'll go for a point where the gains on, on the altcoins actually start to exceed the gains on Bitcoin. And it becomes another point where obviously you want to be getting out and then Bitcoin becomes more profitable. And that's literally what happened um, every single bull market since. If we look at, for example, Ethereum, when did Ethereum top out? Last bull market, it topped out uh, 8th of Jan, back in January. If we go to BTC, where is it? There we go. Started obviously dying off. Where are we? January. Yeah, January here. So January, 8th of Jan, that was when Ethereum topped out. <laughs> so yeah, so I hope that makes sense, bro. Um, like now you can see it on the chart. That's when Ethereum topped out. Then the money goes out of Ethereum again because people realize altcoins are trash and then go back into Bitcoin. And again, guys, Curtis Cobain, Picasso goes through all of this in so much more detail. Like, like don't expect just in an hour and 20 minutes to learn everything. Like, you can't learn like you need you need a proper course so plug into picasso's favorite sessions go back to his sessions from 20, 2019 2018 man there's some gems in there um what is the time average between alt seasons it's all based on the harvesting, bro um so obviously like when we have a we have a four-year cycle so we have like a two-year boom two year bust two year boom two year bust and the alt season typically lasts maybe that like four months five months six months out of that if that um, what would you suggest to watch on Go Live to understand alt season? I don't get it. So go to this web. Oh, guys, alt season just means money goes from Bitcoin. So look, you got crypto, right? So the money can either go in Bitcoin or it can go to altcoins. That's all, the only way it can go. You can go in Bitcoin or it can go in altcoins. That's it. So alt season is when the money goes into altcoins instead of Bitcoin. Think of it like, think of like you got two basketballs, right? If you got two basketballs, and you're pumping one with air, which is Bitcoin, you're pumping it, you're pumping it, you're pumping it, then you get a, a, a mega pump, and you pump the altcoins, boom, that inflates more, that inflates faster, that inflates quicker, boom, now you stop using that, and then obviously you start pumping Bitcoin after. So what happened is the altcoins will go up first, and then Bitcoin will continue after they crash. But um, there is a, Picasso's got a specific video, and when I watched it, I literally just sat there and cried for a little bit because I was so happy with what I learned. <laughs> it was mad. Um, but if you go to his favorite sessions, he's got loads, man. Look at this. So many, man. Watch the master plan. Watch master plan. Watch. Um, watch, 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 watch. Where is it? Oh, has he deleted it? Picasso. Don't tell me he deleted it, bro. Picasso. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm coming to Costa Rica if he deleted it, bro. Where is it? There was a video called Alt Season here. I have if okay, I have the link to it somewhere. So if you got if you want it, just DM me on Instagram or something. But yeah, if you, in here somewhere there's there's one on Alt Season. Um, are you not going to be investing to alts after Alt Season? Nope. Because I wouldn't. Okay, think about it, bro. So Alt Season is when Alt Seasons, the alt coins outperform Bitcoin. When you're not in Alt Season the altcoins don't perform as well as Bitcoin. If anything, they just crash. So when the altcoins are in a bear market, bro, you don't want to be buying in a bear market. Obviously, you want to be selling at the top and then putting your money where the leaders are, where the stronger one are. X thoughts on XRP. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not really like that big of a fan on XRP, to be honest. Um, where can we trade ETC, BTC? I, I don't know what ETC is, bro. Um, ETH, if you're talking about ETH, Ethereum, like ETH, um, any exchange, any exchange will allow you to do that. You literally just convert it. Um, yeah, you literally just convert it. Uh, look at the questions. I'm so behind in the chat. Sorry, family. Sorry, man. But man, um, how long do you think is left in alt season? A few, few months. A few months. But again, I'm just when my targets get hit, man. Like. 
if my target like like you got to correlate price and time man like you can't just use one you can't just look at you can't just look at time and say oh based on time because things change you have to have confluence you can't just say oh you can't just invest based on one thing you can't make an investment decision on one thing you need to have confluence you need to have multiple things pointing towards making that decision so so yeah you need like yeah um i'm gonna watch it definitely 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 so a lot of old coins in the btc pairs are not all-time highs but in the usd pairs they are all-time highs okay um I, i'm not sure what you want what what to say to that bro um do you dollar cost average on ETH? if so where's the best place to buy it any exchange man any exchange is fine you can literally just go on any exchange and then buy them um Find a miner for helium. I was gonna, but they all sold out. So, <laughs> if you find someone that is actually selling helium miners, let me know, please. Um, how much longer? <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I like that. Like, there's only like there's only that like, you. Can't, I mean, you can't predict the future. Let's have a look. Um, I mean, well, last time it took. We're talking this massive parabolic, it took less than 90 days so probably soon probably very soon um if so if you buy btc you buy btc usd or what you buy uh no you so when you're looking at like exchanges and stuff if you're looking at btc usdt that's assuming you need usdt to buy bitcoin so i just normally go straight from fiat currency into crypto um yeah which wallet do you recommend? Um, I think we, we went through that. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like about... I, I'm glad you mentioned that, Alice. That's the only thing I don't like about XRP being centralized. Um, but I mean, ROI-wise, it's good. Um, but yeah. So when you want to get out of Bitcoin before the crash, you'll put your Bitcoin into a stable coin and then you're waiting on the next run to put Bitcoin back in. 100% Liam, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. But obviously, with the profits, we're going to buy property and shit. Um, yeah. What would a realistic trading plan for Ethereum slash BTC look like? Depends what your trading plan is, bro. Like, like it literally depends what your trading plan is, man. Like, my trading plan, I brought this time ago, bro. I've been in this since 2019. So, like, just buy it and sell it when it hits your target. Like, like this is based off, like, again, like, it's based off a lot of different educations. I can't just give you, like, my trading plan because it's not going to work for you. You know, I can give you the tools. I, I, if you're my trading plan, I can I can put my trading plan on the chart. But that doesn't mean anything if you don't know what half of that stuff is. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not even it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, there's a lot into it than just more than one thing. And it's something that I can't explain in in, in one session, family. And I hope you guys understand that because this is something I've been in researching and all this stuff we have has been stuff for like you know the last two and a half, almost three years. So. There's a lot that comes into it, a lot that comes into making these decisions. So when it comes to having a realistic trading plan, I mean, I, I can, if we can go a short answer, we can go a long answer. A long answer, that's a whole nother call. Short answer is buy, hold, and sell when it hits the target. As simple as that. Um, yeah. You need to come visit Ireland when it's when this pandemic is over. Another tour. Sheesh. Yes, 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 yes. Trust me, man. Like Ireland's, Ireland's crazy, and I can't wait to get back out there. What's this boot camp thing? Um, so that's to learn smart money. Uh, man, we got a lot of questions, man. Jeez. Um, yeah, all right, Izzy, when did you get in? Because if you got in, yeah, bro, that thing's up like, that was up 50% when I checked it last. So um, what's the best place to be transferring your BTC? What's the best place to be transferring your BTC to other altcoins as you get an exchange charge? Um, Coinbase Pro? Coinbase Pro, Binance, Exodus are pretty cheap, to be fair. Um, how do you minimize fees? When, when If you're buying from Fiat, buy from Coinbase Pro. Buy from Coinbase Pro. Um, you need multiple WIC reject. Better, uh, so better to get an altcoins at BTC right now. Um, well, <laughs> but you yeah, ask me some funny questions, man. So <laughs> there's no better or worse because it depends what your plan is, it depends what your game plan is, it depends what you're doing, man. Like it depends because this look, this, right? If you if you're not if you if you don't have access to someone like Picasso every single week, then you're not gonna know when to get in and when to get out. If you don't, if you're not clued up on 
on you know on market cycles when when you know what I'm saying if you're not clued up on these different things, it, none of them are going to be good to get into. But if if you are clued up and you really understand what happens with alt season and alt coins, definitely alt season any single day, hundred percent, hundred percent alt coins, and then Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, because that's what I'm doing, right? Alt coins are using alt coins to accumulate more Bitcoin. Get back into Bitcoin when Bitcoin rallies on um, the price. <laughs> um, can you tell us a bit about Irish slash UK tax? So when it comes to tax, your best thing to do is speak to an accountant because um, I'm not a tax advisor. Got in around 0.0078. Yes, Izzy, my guy, my guy, smash it. Um, if I have duh, 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 in exchanges, treasure, yeah, hundred percent. Ig, I can't see your full name, um, Shante. Uh, yeah, Shante. Um, if you've got that amount, definitely go and get Trezor. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Take your coins out of an exchange. Um, looking forward to other call. Cool, <laughs> looking forward to the other call cool for the long answer. Trust me, that is a long answer. Um, what time would you say it's best to buy ETH and what ETH projects, but avoiding high gas fees? So, when it comes to what time would you say is the best to buy ETH? The time, well, like I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you an annoying answer to be a dick, and I'm gonna give you the proper answer. The, not, the best time to buy is here, <laughs> but realistically, the best time is now because Ethereum is gonna hit 20 grand this form, this market cycle. If you didn't know, this is literally mim mim mimicking what Bitcoin did last year. So 20 grand back to three and a half, and then to 380. Yeah. So that's what's happening with Ethereum. But yeah, family. Um. What's your impression of hype coins for a quick profit making a quick buck? What's fast normally doesn't last. What's slow will grow. But with that being said, family, we have been here for quite a while, man. Um, have you been mainly following? Uh, have you just? Yeah, of course, man. Like I'm like, of course, man. If I like, bro, I'm not, I, I don't go on YouTube. I don't go on Reddit. I don't go on any of these different forums to learn from people. I don't know if they've got results. I want to go to the actual source, right? I want to go to the creme de la creme. The cream always rises to the top. So I'm going to the top. I'm going from people who actually have the results I want and learning from people who have proven track records rather than just Bob off Instagram or Jack from down the road. You see what I'm saying? Um, like people like crypto Picasso, man, he's been, in, he's been trading crypto literally for the last 11 years. Like he's been there since day dot, like you, you can't make that stuff up, man. Like you can't make that stuff up. Um, but that being said, family, we are going to actually have to, um, do I use swipe coin? Yes. I love swipe coin, man. Swipe coin is insane. Swipe coin actually, swipe coin is, oh, swipe coin is insane, man. Swipe coin, like the, art, the risk to rewards on swipe coin is ridiculous, but family, we are going to have to call it a day there. If you guys did get value and you guys do want, um, you know, you guys do want to learn more, definitely go back to the person who got you invited to this place and ask him, how do I get access to your community? How do I get access to more mentorship? Um, and you'll definitely be able to. If you guys do want to join my public telegrams, um, you can. It's just t.me forward slash IK Davis. If you um, Google that, you'll have access to my free pri private telegram. Um, if you have any questions about cryptos, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Feel free to hit me on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash IK Davis. But yeah, with that being said, family, I'm um, sending the link. Yeah, I got you. But with that being said, family, thank you all for your time. I appreciate every single one of you guys here. Just make sure this in, in conclusion before we end it up, family, this is something we have never experienced before. These crypto markets are going to produce gains and your portfolio is going to be doing backflips. But remember, detach yourself from the present moment sometimes and elevate your perspective. Get out of your own head, observe your emotions and realize what market sentiment is. Realize when others are being greedy, it's time to be fearful. When, when everyone's talking about Bitcoin, I'm telling you, the end of this year, the bull market is going to be done. End of this year is going to be done. You want to be starting to get out at the end of this year. And you're going to thank me after that. But with that being said, family, stay patient, stay disciplined, and the gains will come. With that being said, tomorrow we've got another call at 7 p.m. UK time going through exactly how you guys will be able to get access to our mentorship, a bit more information about that. So tomorrow, 7 p.m., make sure you ask me for the link or whoever invited you here. I'll see you all tomorrow. Let's get it.